Hey guys, I'm back with another video. There's some major updates in Lightroom since my last post. In today's edit, we'll be using Lightroom, not Classic. Let me show you what's new. The presets are now located in their own tab. Adaptive presets for the skies, portraits, and subjects that you can use instantly. Think about it as a quick selection that AI generated. You can now change the exposure or change the color temperature just by one click. And when it comes to portraits, it's quite time consuming. This is where adaptive presets come in. You can isolate features like the teeth or hair or smoothen the skin easily. As for the tone curve, there are two updates. You can now do more intricate edits with the tone curve inside the mask panel. And there is a new refined saturation slider that you can play around with. Another significant update is the denoise AI. The old sliders are still there, you can do it manually. I have re-edited some of my old photos. Although there isn't much control apart from one slider, I'm happy with the results because third-party plugins are not required for the most part. And the AI does an excellent job of removing noise while retaining details. For this video, I've chosen a JPEG from a while back. When I used to shoot JPEG, it was a beginner's mistake. That means the color profile is embedded in the photo and the tonal range is limited. As a result, there won't be much flexibility to work with. But I do enjoy challenges. And most importantly, I believe some of you are JPEG shooters too. The photo was taken on a vehicle in California and it has motion blur if I zoom in. It was a random lake I saw on the highway. The original color is rather pale, and I want to restore it, bring it to life, and use some of the new features we have mentioned. Let's lay down some of the building blocks, beginning with the color palette as always. Earthy tone might not be the best way to describe it. For the mountain and the grass, I would like to use these colors. For the sky and the water, I prefer lighter tones. What I'm creating is a color contrast, similar to orange and teal, but with less saturation. It's all about color grading. Enough talking, ready for some action? Let's start with basic adjustments. We're changing the color temperature of the entire image to a warmer tone. Then we add some green tint. Why? Because we can change the hue of the green later. Moving on to the tone curve, we will add some contrast here. As usual, add control points on midtones, highlights, and shadows. Bring down the midtone and shadows a little bit. Let's try out the refined saturation slider. It's set to 100 by default. Does it make a difference? Yeah, subtly. Let's keep it in the middle, somewhere around here. Next step, Hue, Saturation, and Luminance. In this color mixer panel, you can adjust 8 colors in specific. There are 3 sliders for each color. We're going to use it to shift the hue of the grass and mountain. Okay, green and yellow. We'll just slide the hue all the way to the left. See the difference? Shift the blue sky to cyan. Desaturate it. We do the same for orange and red. Let's click on the I button here to see the adjustment we made. The framework is here. Now we go into more detail on selective edits. We gotta do something with the sky, right? Click on this button, create a new mask. 
You should see a sky button right here by default. Click on it, it will detect automatically. The white color represents the mask. You can change the display however you want it to be. Labeling is important to keep things organized down the stretch as we are creating multiple masks. The purpose here is to reveal more details in the clouds. We can do it by decreasing the highlights and increasing the shadows. Speaking of details, we can always use these three sliders. Texture, clarity, and the haze to enhance the effect. The haze is the most powerful one amongst all. Not only increase the contrast, but also darken the colors. So we have to be careful not to make it too dramatic. And bear in mind this is a JPEG. You can see the details have revealed in the whiter part. All good. After we have applied the adjustments up here, you can control the amount that goes into the mask. It gives you an extra layer of flexibility control because sometimes when you look back the next day, you might think, oh gosh, it's too intense. So you can dial back easily with this slider. We're going to create another mask for the mountain. This time we're going for color range mask. Click on the mountain it instantly makes the selection. I change the overlay color so you can see it better. So now you can see some of the clouds are selected. With this slider here, I can reduce the area of selection. We don't have to worry about the lake because we will create another mask for it. We can darken the colors with the shadow slider. At the moment, the mountain and the grass are a little bit orangey. I'm going to make some adjustments with the color temperature and the tone curves. In the color mixer, we have already adjusted the hue of the green to a warmer orange color. With the new tone curve feature inside the mask, we can do different things with the shadows, midtones, and highlights. All we need is a little nudge. So you can see the variation. The color spectrum is more realistic, not as flat as before. For the lake, we are creating another color range mask. Since the lake and the sky are pretty much the same color, it's all selected. We can remove the sky from our selection. How? See this subtract button here. We can shrink the color range selection with this slider. Let's go for a turquoise. Maybe expand the range a little bit. Here's the before and after. While I'm playing around with the color tone in the background, I would like to talk about the experience of editing JPEG. It's definitely harder to achieve the color I envision, and I have to be very careful with the values because the pixels will break. It takes me longer to edit, a lot of back and forth. Before we go, I would like to introduce you one more function that you might find useful. In the color mixer here, you can use this target to tap on the photo and slide left and right to adjust the values. It will automatically select the corresponding colors. And in here, you can switch to saturation, luminance, or hue. It will be easier than going through each slider one by one. I hope you enjoyed the edit. I've shared the screen grabs on my Instagram. I make this video to take you through the process and explain how I apply the mask step by step. If you are interested in more Lightroom edits, you can check out my Instagram. I'm most active there. Thanks for watching. Until next time.